Draymond going to be in the in the room this year? Oh, I don't know. He may be. Um, I don't think he's here in the Bay Area right now. But um, he said he might be coming back tomorrow, so I don't know. Can't keep him out if he wants to come in, I guess. <laughs> Bob, the other day you said you really hadn't wrapped your mind around the draft yet. I mean, it was, you know, it was a day after the season ended. But now you've had a, at least a few days, right? To yeah. Are, are you ready? You geared up? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you guys rested and relaxed? No, I don't think oh. anybody is. Um, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of good people that uh, have been focused on it all year. So you rely on the people you work with, and they're very good. And uh, getting our heads around it, uh, you know, we have 28, 58. But the draft is always really fluid and constantly changing. Uh, seems to change m more often as you get closer to it. A lot of potential things that get floated about. But um, I think we'll be ready come whatever time tomorrow, 4.30. With the roster you guys have coming in the next season and the injuries, is this a drive where you might trade into maybe trying to get an extra pick? I know you already have two. Yeah, I mean we have to be aware of roster spots. I mean we like to have as many picks as we can, but I think we have to be aware that um, we've got some youth already. Um, what, what, who'll be back? I mean, how, how many spots will we have to fill? What positions? But we, we like some. We think it's a decently deep draft, so we'll see if anything makes sense to get another pick or not and what we would do with it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, um, there's a lot of moving parts to this one this year. Bob, there, are, said there are a couple uh, like high-level prospects that are going through injury rehabs or have kind of injury red flags because of the situation you're facing where you're going to have at least one guy, maybe two guys on, on long rehabs next year. Does that take those guys off the table for you? Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, everything you factor all that stuff in, right? I mean, who, who's going to be available, potentially available next year to play? Um, who, who that person is? Is that a veteran? Is that a rookie? Is that a, is that a previous young player? Is that a new young player? Um, yes, I mean, we're going to need, I think, uh, even, even the guys that are healthy have played a lot of basketball. We're talking about, you know, Steph, Draymond, Andre, those type of guys have played a lot of basketball. So... You know, we're going to need guys that can play big minutes and, and hopefully contribute and, and just eat up minutes as much as they can. So it does factor into whether it's the draft decision or decisions in, in July that uh, you, have to, you have to utilize that and react to it and respond to it in the best way you can. So what do you think is the biggest need on this team that could be addressed in at least some fashion with the draft? Um, biggest need? I don't know, just good, good players. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, you know, good young players. I mean, whatever position they are, those are the highest. Those players have the most value in the NBA. Uh, rookie contract players that uh, show themselves to um, have a skill and, and can play. Especially, maybe next year we we afford more opportunity for who we pick. Uh, maybe, maybe we get a guy that can step in. Um, I think we'll have we will have more opportunity next year, no matter what happens in free agency. I think we'll have more of an opportunity for a young guy. What do they do with that? Do we pick the right guy? Um, you know, the, how much does Steve want to use that, that player? What position he is? I don't, I don't really know. But we're just good young players. Do you guys actually there. have a draft prospect in your organization already? What's that like? Is there something new for you guys, someone that you can scout that's already within the organization? What do you mean? What are you talking about? What, 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 you, Alex Wiley. Oh, oh, him. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not, I mean, that, the rules are – that's going to probably change more and more where whether it's college kids, I think, international kids are choosing that route. And so it gives, whether it's even us or another team, um, a chance to kind of get to know that individual better. Um, and so certainly, uh, there's, there's a lot of guys. He's one of the guys that was in Santa Cruz and is, is a draftable player. But I think a lot of other, I don't know that it's a secret. Um, I think a lot of other teams probably have seen him as well. And, but sure, you know, once you coach a guy, or, or Aaron Miles knows him better because he's coached him, his teammates know him better. Um, so it gives you a little bit of more of, more of an awareness I don't know how big it, I mean, we're still drafting what, what we see out there, so factored in. Whoever you take, I mean, uh, with Aaron coaching the summer league, how, how excited are you for, for him to, you know, work with those young guys? Uh, great. I mean, it's always exciting to see, I think a lot of our guys have already, Steve, Steve's pretty good at delegating uh, that, that job. Steve did it, the first, everybody forgets Steve did it his first year. He coached the summer league team, which seems like 100 years ago. But, um, yeah, it's a great uh, the G League is a fantastic, the Summer League, that's a training ground to learn. Uh, I think it's great. For, for we, We've hired people at all levels. I mean, Kent Lake was the GM. Kirk was originally down there. 
going back to even when we bought the team in uh, South Dakota um, and to see where it is now. So yeah, to so see Aaron uh, cut his you know cut his teeth down there and now coach our summer league team. It's all it's all the evolution of the NBA, which is great. And uh, summer league is even I remember summer league started. Warren Legary started it. Um, I don't know how many years ago, and uh, he had the idea to put it in Vegas, and he showed me the, a napkin of how many teams. I remember this. Uh, he had six teams. He said, "I think we can get these six teams to to go to Vegas and move it out of Long Beach." So summer league, even by itself, is it's a whole deal now. I mean, it's kind of like the NBA's summer meetings. It's not officially called that, but I know the baseball has their winter meetings. A lot of business is done. Um, you know, wherever the top pick goes, those games are literally sold out. Thomas and Mac, um, so it's a good good chance for people to, to learn their craft, young players to get acclimated, and, and young coaches to start learning how to coach at the NBA level. Do you, Bob, when you guys are picking as late as you are in the last few years, is it only ever best player available or for the positional need factor into that at all? I think, Nick, it's usually best player available, unless I've never really experienced a, a, a straight up tie um, sometimes that happens where you're 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 kind of at that at, it's a lot of that number is in the it's not a, sometimes as obvious if you've got six or seven people weighing in to get complete um, buy-in on one guy is sometimes a little harder because you're looking at players that usually are imperfect um, if they were had all the tools and checked all the boxes they wouldn't be there at 28 so you have different opinions um, so sometimes it gets to the point where a group is split and they say well, look, if it's that close, let's go with position. You know, let, let's go with an area where we need more help or an area of deficiency. Usually it isn't, but it can happen where you're kind of right up against it and you say, all right, well, if it's that close, <coughs> this is an area where we need it more than another. So that, sometimes it happens that way, but I don't often see it go, here's a really good player, we don't really need that position, let's pass on him. Usually you, our philosophy is you, you take that guy. You guys have talked about 16 game players, and I know you always want that, uh, but in this current situation, would it maybe be more, could you lean more focus on a specific talent that can play over 82 versus going for purely playoff kinds of players? No, yeah, we might, I mean, it's, um, I mean, you'd like to get both. Um, and um, it's, sometimes it's hard in, in the draft to, you know, view a guy as what he may or may not be. It's still early. It's a little easier in free agency to maybe say, I think this guy, can or can't play in the playoffs because you've seen um, kind of what that guy's pedigree is and you've seen his resume in the league. In the draft, it's a little harder. I mean, you obviously want a guy that you can project playing in the playoffs because that's what we're all trying to do is win playoff games. But yeah, I mean, I think, um, can you find a guy that has a skill? Can you find a guy that you believe has that potential to do it? Uh, I don't think we draft guys and go, oh, this guy. I, I understand your question and it's fair. I, but we, we wouldn't draft a guy and just say, well, this guy can, can't play in the playoffs, but it'll help us in the regular season. I think sometimes that's a little bit easier to do, like I said, in free agency, to make that d delineation. You always want shooting, but is shooting, no matter what, much more important this year, just given Clay and Durant? Well, yeah, if, if, if Clay's out and, and who, you know, who, whatever our team is, um, we're, we're, we're likely to be diminished in that area. Does that mean? You try to do that through trade, free agency, draft. Um, the hard part is every team, I mean, shooting is at a premium, maybe at the highest premium it's ever been. Uh, if you watch the finals and, and somebody mentioned, you know, the team that made the most threes every, every game won that game. I don't know if that's a direct and obvious correlation or if, but the point is, is that it's becoming more than ever a skill that um, is in demand. People pay for it. People value it. Um, we're certainly, we, we always have. I mean, we have obviously are fortunate enough to have some great shooters. Um, but you can never have enough of that stuff. Do you have any early medical updates on Xavier or Clay? No. <coughs> Has Clay had a surgery? No. So well, the team's given a month or more to, to look at this, just focus on the draft. For five years, you've had, what, five days after the season ends and you go to the draft. What have you learned about what's important to focus in a condensed time like that? You have to um, re rely on your staff. I mean, mi micromanaging doesn't work. I mean, you have to trust the people you work with. 
and um, what you learn is that, uh, you, like you said, it, it's a very compressed window, whether it's the draft or free agency, and so um, you have to trust the people that are focused on that and have been focused on that. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's right. I, I, I kind of joke about it, but it is somewhat uncommon to have such a small amount of time. And these are huge decisions we're trying to make and get right here in, in, a, in a short window of time. And there's also a mental, you, you know, your fatigue level and just how do you kind of ramp it back up. Um, but these decisions we make tomorrow and in the next couple of weeks will, you know, they'll, they'll affect next year and the following year and the following year. So you, you really have to be on point. Um, so you rely on your group and, uh, you know, make the best decisions you can. Mr. Bob, all things considered, what do you think you've gotten out of the, the recent late first round and early second round picks, I guess, with Trevon and Damian and yeah. um, Jacobs and Jordan? Yeah, so let's see. Well, going back to, you know, obviously Dr Dr Draymond was, that obviously worked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know, Festus I thought was good. He helped us, you know, play and was, Obviously, you know, had an injury, but he, I think he was a good pick. Um, you know, N N Nedevich, you know, probably didn't. Um, Damien's been, you know, he's been injured. He started for us and was, was helpful. Looney kind of was written off and obviously, you know, really to his credit and our coaching staff developed well and become a big part of our team. Um, Jacob, to be determined. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I'm, am I, Jordan. Jordan Bell, yeah, Jordan. I mean, McCall, with, you know, every. They're all different stories, you know, and, and the point is, is that maybe you get, you like to get them all right. We, we try, um, but I don't think anybody's that good. I don't, I don't purport that, that anybody can get all those right. I mean, if you look at the numbers, the chances of success at that range is pretty low. doesn't mean you don't, you know, it's, if you get it right, it's a huge payoff. Sometimes it takes time to see if you got it right or not. I think Looney was probably forgotten early and now, like I said, to his credit, it's become something. Was that a good pick? I guess so. You know, I mean, um, but but again, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I think you have to wait a little bit on some of these things to, to really self-critique. And we do that up in our room. We say, what did we get right or wrong? Sometimes you grade the draft and say, we look back on last year's draft and say, why did we have that guy ranked so high? If we had picked him, we'd have been wrong. Um, so it's important to um, self-regulate on some of that stuff and not be so arrogant to think, well, we're smarter and we're better, and that, that never, I don't think you get, you don't learn anything from that. Do you have an idea of how many guys you've had in to work out? <sighs> Maybe 40, something like that, around that, I'm not, 40 to 50, I guess. A few of those came in a couple times? <laughs> uh, yeah, a few guys did come back a few times, a couple times, yeah. All right, do you have the autonomy, the freedom this year to use every, uh, I guess, financial Avenue you can. I remember last year you guys didn't know if you were going to use them. Right. Well, obviously, the market became available. But like, all right, do you have the freedom this year to use it all? Yeah, I mean that's that's a you know I, I know you you uh, everybody here covers our team. I, I really would like to say I'm fortunate to work for someone that uh, it's uh, I, people say these things, but but winning has always been the primary goal. Um, and and we're, we run a business, so it's not being completely fiscally ir irresponsible. But every time I've went to Joe. Uh, it seems that, that has benefited us um, competitively. He's responded affirmatively and said, okay, you know, so there's never really been a hard, even a hard budget, so to speak. Um, we want, we gotta be cost conscious too, though. I, I, I think that um, anybody would, um, but I will say the decisions we've made, I think, don't trust my words, trust, trust our payroll. I mean, <laughs> just look at what it is, it's big. Uh, and so, um, you know, you, you uh, like I said with Cousins last year, you, you want to be smart about it. I don't think you just spend it to spend it or spend money to buy a pick tomorrow. You want to, you want to do it to win. Um, but fortunately, we have somebody that is willing to engage in all that dialogue. And usually if, it, if it's the consensus, yeah, do it. Can you explain the, the disabled player exception or injured player exception, just how that process works and, and if that applies to you guys when you have to apply for it? Are you guaranteed to get it? Those sorts of things. Yeah, and ge generally it's uh, a rule where if you have a player on your roster that um, is unable to play for an extend, pretty, pretty, pretty extended amount of time, the league affords you an exception to um, get another player, and uh, the, the value of the exception differs based on 
Um, but it's up to a certain amount, and I don't know exact the exact number if it's nine or I don't know what the exact number is, but it um, gives you a little more. It's, it's just these are all a lot of people don't understand, and I totally I, I understand why they don't understand <laughs> the cap. Um, only reason I understand it is I been around. It hasn't evolved, it, although the CBA has changed in 20 years. The exceptions are relatively the same. The bird exception, the non-bird, sorry, excuse me, the uh, the mid-level. Now they, they did add a taxpayer mid-level, but the biannual, all these things are not, you know, the trade exceptions, the amount that you have to, what you can aggregate in the trade. Even though the CBA has evolved and the cap has gone up and the luxury tax was then put in, the fundamental rules are still the same. Um, so the, the disabled player exception is just another tool to provide optionality for your roster is really what it is. So, um, it's not football, it's not a hard cap, it's a soft cap, and that's another way to say, well, we've got an injured guy, we've used our mid-level, we've used our minimum, how can we sign or get a player um, that is larger than that? Or how, how can we acquire a player at a bigger number? So um, it's just another tool. Well, this, this may sound silly, but with an ACL recovery, is it still considered nine to 12 months these days? I mean, or does it depend? when they go in there and see what all the damage might be. Yeah. I'm just, appreciate the question. I just want to do draft stuff today. Okay. If that's a, yeah. gets into in general, how like long a, what you a, might be without the guy. Oh, yeah. To, well, I mean, yeah, I don't know right now. Yeah, yeah I, I really yeah. don't know. I don't know until I know more. Um, to speculate, I'd just be kind of guessing. Okay. And I know what I guessed would be written and wouldn't okay. even matter. But no, I understand. Difficult. No, no, yeah. you're not. You're not being difficult. Bob, obviously, you know, every draft is learning. You, you mentioned how it affects the future of this team, but every every draft does. But considering the state of this roster, a slew of injuries, is this maybe the most important draft you've had in your career? No, I think the most important one was the Harrison dream when we had the seventh pick. I mean, they're all important, but I think the most important draft would be a year where we were picking first or second or third or fourth. Th those are the you don't want to miss ever. Um, but the most important decisions you make, I think, are you don't want to get that wrong. We don't want to get the 28th pick wrong. We don't want to get anything wrong. It's just the difference between signing a max player or a minimum. If you don't get a minimum right, okay, well, that's a minimum contract is 2% is of your salaries. I mean, it's literally 2%. If the salary cap's 100 million and I'm being loose here and you sign a player for 2 million, that's 2% of your payroll is a minimum player. It's a lot different when you're drafting one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. If you miss on that, um, that's a hard one to recover from. You miss on signing a player that costs 15, 20, 30. That's a different thing to recover from. Um, 28, I don't know what that guy makes, a million and a half bucks. Yeah, it's an opportunity to get better. Is it change the name? It, it can, like I said, you can. There's been guys that have been drafted there that change the course of a franchise. It does happen, it's rare. We try to do that every year. Um, we hold ourselves uh, to the, the highest standard that we can. Um, if we don't, then you guys all help help us with that. <laughs> um, so, is it the most important draft? I think they're all pretty pretty important. Pretty important. You mentioned being careful about roster spots. Do you think you're drafting 58 for the roster for sure, or is that kind of? I mean, 58 may provide an option to have a two-way. Now, now with the two-way contracts, um, maybe maybe that's another way to add another guy, take another look at a guy, but. At that point in the draft, it's two minutes between picks. It's happening fast. We'll have already picked someone. Who knows if we get another pick? You know, will we have picked someone else? Will, will we have done anything else? Um, it's 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 only two picks better than somebody that isn't drafted. So, you know, how valuable is it? It's it's nice to have. Um, so we'll see what kind of who, who ends up even being available there. You said last year that you were still. I guess learning that two-way deal and trying to get in the swing of it. How do you feel with that and using that going forward? I think it's great. I mean, how do I feel? I mean, I think it's a great tool for players and the league. It's just another two spots to. Uh, we, we've obviously used those guys. Yeah. Um, and it's good. It's uh, it's a way for guys that are kind of just in between the G League and the NBA to find that 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 small space to feel like they're part of the NBA. That we can feel like. We retain their rights. It's not just a guy that we really like that plays in the G League. It's actually somebody where we own their rights. We can utilize them, and they get to play in NBA games. It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a 17 man roster now instead yeah. of a 15, which is which is good. I think it's good for players. It's good for us. It's not. It doesn't cost what another guy would cost. Um, and for us especially, because we played 
you know, 500 and whatever games in the last five years. It's been good to have uh, guys like that that can come up and spell minutes for some of the other guys. So I think it's been a good thing for us and the league. You kind of said the first picks are kind of plug and play guys. People are expecting to draft someone, put them in the lineup right away. Where you are, are you able to pick people and say, you know, this guy's got a lot of potential, maybe we can coach him up? Or is it worth, is it worth taking that risk if he doesn't have some specific skill that you're, that you're drafting for? I mean, I think you got to balance it. You got to balance it between is this a guy that can play next year? Is this a guy that can definitely not play next year? Um, what kind of team are we going to be? What, temp, what type of expectations do we have it internally? Um, how would we use this guy? How willing is our is Steve to, 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 to like a player like this? Um, does he fit our system? Did he play one year? Did he play four? Did he play three? How mature is his body? Um, how mature is he mentally? All, all those, is he injured? Is he, is he slightly injured? Is he fully healthy? Is he recovering? Does he need surgery? I mean, we've, we drafted all kinds of guys. Um, Draymond, you'd look back and say he was ready, but he didn't even really play much. Um, his, he's about as ready as you can get in that range. Um, he didn't play a ton. Um, you know, F Festus was pretty ready, but he played and he'd had an injury in college. I'm just looking back at our own previous history, but I think you factor all those things in. Um, and you do hope though, CW, you do hope that, sure, I mean, whoever you draft, you'd love to find him in the rotation. You'd, you'd, that'd be a nice hope, um, to, you know, depend. Do you have a different seat you uh, mentioned? Last couple of I don't want to do the last question. I'm, I'm not we'll do one good. more after yours. Okay. I'm not, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not that good. Yeah. Um, do you have a preference? One, two, or three years in college. One, two, three, or four years in college. You mentioned that. Would you rather have someone if you're going to draft at that area that be that you've been in the program for a while? I don't know. I mean, they're all different, right? I mean, everybody's matures differently physically and mentally and emotionally. <coughs> so you know, a first year guy sometimes is more physically mature than a three or four year guy. Um, it seems like nowadays. It's pretty rare you can get a four-year. I mean, they're all, but it happens. I don't know. I mean, that's a fair question. I think we still try to just take the best guy available. Do you have an idea of uh, your summer league team yet of who would be on there as far as I think, Jacob? I think Jacob's going to play. Gonna play. Um, other than that, it'll be probably whoever we draft. Well, we have we have an idea. We have a board up there with an idea of people we're talking to that, that are you know free agents that might play on it, young free agents. But otherwise, on our roster, I don't think there's another guy. Um, I don't think Damon's doing it. Um, Mc, Mc, McKinney's going to go out there and like work out. I don't think he's going to play. I think he's going to work out in Vegas. Um, but uh, it'll primarily be J Jacob. We'll see what he can do, and then the draft picks, putting them out there.